So all that remains now is to install the window frame. And for this, you're going to need a course of bricks running along the top of your inside internal window sill where the block work sits. So you can work from the block work side or the brick work side. All my materials are on this side. So I'm going to lay my bed from this side and then position the bricks from the other side. The reason for this course of bricks is it gives it a little gradient so that the bricks can fall down on the windowsill repelling any water away from the building. So the internal height of the window is going to be higher than the external height of the window. So, go inside. Doesn't matter which way round you place your faces. All that matters is that the window is level, plumb and range through to the inside of the wall. So you, for this, you need both, both of your um, levels. And at the end, we can plumb it all in and range it through. So now moving back round to the brickwork side, you're going to fill up all the props on both the front and the outside. So internal skin and outernal. Just like we did with the Katnick lintel at the top. Tiny little bed, making sure all your frogs are filled up. And we're going to be adhering steel to it. We need to ensure that there are no pockets for frost to sit in. So now that we've filled it all up, we're going to take our Ziglag window lintel, making sure that all the underside is clean, in case the last person didn't clean it off. And it should sit perfectly to the perfect height of your window. It should sit perfectly flush with the front of your windowsill, and it should sit perfectly at the same height as your brickwork on your internal sill. As you can see, it just about fits with a 910 opening. Um, if it doesn't fit, one side of the brickwork or blockwork must come down. Now, another tricky bit, we're going to be using the, the DPC or DPM again. 
that we cut earlier to the size by measuring the opening and adding 100 mil. This one is even more tricky than the first one. So you're going to roll it out with your fold ups at each end. And then this time you've got to try and fold it into the creases of the zigzag lintel now. And this is the, the very tricky bit because the top bit of DPC does not fit. So you're using two bricks just to stabilize it whilst we get started. Like that. Okay, very tricky little process. And then we're going to sit one brick in the middle just so we know that this is running along the line of the the lintel. Now because it's a, a zigzag lintel we want triangle beds because we're going to try and sit the brick onto this little ledge at the top here. So instead of doing a nice straight bed what we're going to do is we're going to do an angled bed, a bit like a wedge shape. And to start us off we're going to need a little weep hole again in the collection chamber at the side push it down so that we know that the water can escape through the back here. We make sure that our mortar bed is higher than the lintel itself so that when we put a brick on there it actually beds it. So for this brick I'm going to put it with the butt face out so I'm going to fill out, fill up the frog before I lay it down because it's easier to do that whilst it's in my hand. I'm then going to sit it onto the lintel and down into place okay so it should sit nice and flush at the back if it doesn't if it's rocking about like that then you lift it out of position and you're just going to remove some of the mortar that you've put down there okay so now we'll rebed it and what we're aiming to achieve is a 10 mil bed here have it sitting on the metal at the back. So as we can see, we've now developed this gap here, which we can fill up with mortar by just placing it into place. We could have bed jointed that in the beginning, and I will do that on the other side, just to demonstrate how to do it. It's quick and easy to fill up if you forget it, like so. Do is we're going to lay one more brick there next to it to give it some structural properties so that it can offset a little bit. You've got to remember all four sides need to be jointed up. And now we're going to push this one into the last one. As you can see, they all move together, so we've got to be really careful that it doesn't drop down lower than the last one. So if it does, lift it off and top up the bed. So it was fine at the top, just too small at the bottom. And we only add mortar to the bottom. Now what we're going to do, just rub them together to get your 10 mil joint. cut off the excess mortar that's coming out the bottom of the wall. Okay, this is very tricky and they will tend to want to rock forwards. So what we're going to do is we're just going to level across the top of these two. So this one wants to go down and we're just going to put the level through the face to make sure that they're not falling forwards. So if they're falling forwards or you'd like to have a guide Rather to help you, you will need two concrete blocks to lean against your wall. You will lean them like so. And then 
using your level as the guide, you're going to position it into place like so. And then to stop this from pushing forwards, you need to fill up this wedge here and the wedge at the other end. Okay, this is only a temporary former to hold bricks from sliding forwards or tilting forwards. Okay, and then we can start from the other end. So, cheese wedge joints again, just like it is on the other side. But on this side, we're going to put the weak hole in and then like I pointed out on the other side we're going to join up above it so that when we push this brick against it we don't have to so we'll tap that down until we hear the metal then using our little level oh, we're using a second big level so it's not long enough We can level from one side to the other to get it level across this face. Okay, so this is looking pretty.